In today's video, I modify a small reconnaissance plane, make a new tiny crane, I make minor modifications to main turrets, and few more details at secondary turrets. Then I replace few anti-aircraft guns, besides I make a new mast from scratch, and replace almost everything from plastic on the main deck. And so far, this is only the first half of the video, so enjoy! Hello fellow modelers! It's been a while since the last battleship model, so here is the new one. And what else than Yamato? I chose a snap kit from Fujimi, in 700 scale. It has relatively nice and soft details, but nothing like new kits from Flyhawk. So we need to perform minor improvements again. First, I bought a detail set from Edart. Inside are three metal sheets for main improvements, so you can use it, but more interesting is this crazy detail set. There are tons of brass parts, including new gun barrels and new side turrets. The instruction manual is literally a small book. I only had a problem read from photos where to place some parts, but I will figure it out. I mentioned that Edart said had three metal sheets, so this one has 11 of them. No need to be worried, it will be easy, I thought. Ok, it's going to be fun again, so let's start. I start with the main turrets. I am separating parts from the sprue with a sharp side cutters, and I am removing almost all plastic details because I will replace them with uh, better ones. I use for this purpose sharp hobby knife and the residual plastic I am removing with a soft nail file. The whole Fujimi kit is a snap kit, so you can assemble it without glue, but with the detail set you can forget at this. You need at least two types of adhesives, glue for plastic, like Revel Contacta, and super glue for metal parts. The gun barrels are out of the scale, so the best solution is to cut them out and replace them with the metal ones. You can buy them separately for $5 if you do not have a detail set. You only need to drill out small holes and glue barrels with a super glue. Also, the gun protective covers are larger than they should be. Ok, now I am making fabric structure more interesting with a two component epoxy party. I like sculpting small details with an ordinary toothpick. Good trick is to moisten toothpick with water because you will decrease the adhesion. Now the funny part, the photo edge metal parts from Flyhawk are super soft and thin. I highly recommend purchasing a headband magnifier, at least 3 times magnification, otherwise the assemble all the parts is almost impossible, you will see why. I use it for gluing metal parts, primarily super glue, you already know that, but I recommend using different types. The ultra small parts I glue with a thin flexible super glue, and larger with a slow drying super glue, for example Loctite 60 seconds. It has a gel consistency, and after application you have a relatively a lot of time to correct the position of parts. Another important tool if you decide to make some extra details are sharp tweezers. I have some tools from Amazing Art, Academy and Modelcraft. The structure has around 1mm and this one is still large. The heavy anti-aircraft guns are made from resin. So be careful not to destroy them, because they are very fragile and tiny. Did I tell tiny? No, no, no. This is tiny. I must assemble from metal parts all secondary AA guns. The instruction manual is kidding me. Red lines indicate band. 
Okay, that is the reason why I ordered magnifying glass. Otherwise, it is not probably possible to assemble it. In the manual should be also mentioned that breathing is not recommended meanwhile working with these parts. There is a risk of inhalation. The whole gun is smaller than the match head. So what can be crazier than that? Mm, easy answer, make 25 of them. In any case, the details are slightly better than the plastic parts which are in the kit. After all extra work, you can compare the details on the modified turret and from the kit. I think it's worth it. Now I'm making the fabric structure more uniform with a surfacer. The first and easy part of the ship is done, so now more minor improvements. The secondary turrets are much smaller, consequently require even more care. Cut out gun barrels and replace them, then add more than 30 metal parts. This is crazy difference. It looks like a completely new model. Because it is, almost. I prefer separating parts from the sprue with a sharp hobby knife. But the most important is proper cutting pad. I like plexiglass because it is not soft, so you don't bend parts meanwhile cutting. And also it is not super hard, so parts do not fly out. I attach parts for easier manipulation on adhesive poster gum. I didn't use metal bender tool for any parts of the kit. The flyhawk has very soft edge edges. Thus you can bend large parts gently in your fingers. I glue parts together with a thin super glue. And again, difference for comparison between new and old. I like these beautiful details. It is difficult to glue small parts on another metal part. I cut the toothpick to thin a needle and apply with it small amount of the glue to the direct place. Then attach tiny details to tweezers and carefully place them to the spot.
I know the details are pretty complex and difficult, but also the kit itself has many small parts, even it is a snap kit. So I assume that it is not a kit for beginners. Let's make more fun improvements. The funnel is again simplified and this time we need to remove a lot of plastic details around. The whole sheet with the details is only for this part. I like to transfer parts precisely with this Wax Adhesive Pencil. The most difficult is to glue all parts symmetrically and in one line. If you want to bend the railing to circle, then good is to use some roller. Do not try to bend this shape with uh, tweezers. Now I can finally attach small guns that I assembled at the beginning. The bridge has crazy stairs and ladders, but it is again nice detail. Ok, I downloaded a lot of photos as documentation for my modifications. I noticed how thick is the plastic mask in the comparison with the real one. I have different diameters of brass and steel round rods. Actually, I found a new metal mast kit at eBay, but why not to make something from scratch for a change? 
You can solder parts together, but it is easier to simply glue them with a super glue. The good trick is to use wax paper as a pad for gluing. The super glue will not stick on it. I have a lot of useful materials from Scrap Electronic. Primarily I use cheap brass conductors or coils. I use as a scalping material two component epoxy party. It would be almost heresy to make all fine details on the model and then leave the mast from the kit, so the difference is significant. I think the new one fits quite well to all other details. I removed a lot of footage of a detailed work because it was a lot of it, literally a couple of tense hours. So sorry that I didn't show some sections. The last major improvement is the rear deck. Funny is that you must remove almost everything from plastic again and replace it with the large metal sheet. You can use metal files for removing plastic, but faster and easier is electric grinder. The best for gluing this large part is again slow drying super glue. In the manual was that you must bend and glue these metal parts together, but perform clean band was very difficult. Therefore, I'm separating parts and gluing them. It is easier and cleaner than bending. I accidentally applied glue in the wrong place, but it is not a problem if you have a super glue debonder. Then you can easily wipe it out with a cotton swab. Behold, this is the finished section with the details. I know, it is 700 scale, but it looks more like a larger model. I think you already have enough of details. Therefore, the second part of this video is primarily about painting. Paint the realistic wooden deck is challenging and time-consuming process, but it is good to change. First, I'm spraying brown primer. The acrylic color will adhere better and brown nicely unifies the surface. The second layer is acrylic deck tan color. And the third layer is acrylic lacquer varnish. It protects paint job and it is suitable base for varnish. I mixed my own wash from brown acrylic paint and white spirit. It is cheaper and quality of the color is better, primarily because it is a fresh mix. 
I am applying this dark liquid gently to pan lines. This wooden deck has nice and soft details, so you can use it. But sometimes it is better to buy a wooden laser cut replacement part. I am trying to apply darker shading around turrets and superstructures. It will make shading more interesting. If you want to be paint stinking, then you can paint some wooden planks with a different shades. You make the whole deck optically less uniform and more realistic. Before painting with the rest of the hull, do not forget to remove moon lines and improve rudder. I need to unify all pieces with a primer. On metal parts ordinary acrylic color does not adhere very well. You can attach small parts to adhesive poster gum. The spraying is more comfortable if you do not need to touch them. And I use for this purpose Mr. Color 1000 primer surfacer diluted with a leveling thinner. The details are very soft. Thus, try to spray a very thin layer. Ok, now I'm spraying acrylic dark grey color. I use this shade for the whole model, but do not worry, it is only the basic shade. Now I am spraying highlights with a light grey color. Important is to dilute the color with a lot of thinner. You will prevent small splatters and the color transition will be nicely smooth. This is the result after basic shading, only with the two colors. Even now looks the turret more delightful. I am painting small details of acrylic colors for paintbrushes, like Gravel Aqua, Vallejo or Citadel. There are different types than paints for airbrushes, and you can dilute them with the water. The rest of painting is the same as on the turrets. Try to spray raised parts and details with a light grey color. Do not forget to remove imperfections after primer. The hull has pronounced mold lines, so you can remove them with a soft sandpaper. If you have in your hand sandpaper, you can also modify screw propellers. As you can see, the blades are quite thick in the kit. I am filling seam line with a Surfacer 500. It is basically diluted party. The red-brown hull color seems to be very dark, so I'm trying to make it lighter with an orange-red shade. I mask the hull with a contouring masking tape, because it is nicely flexible. The rest is ordinary paper yellow masking tape. You can protect the result with a clear varnish. Meanwhile drying, I assemble the deck and turrets parts.
Okay, the varnish is after 5 hours properly dry, so let's paint weathering with oil paints. I am painting a lot of dots with orange color. This is only the first step to make the hull less uniform. I use white spirit for blending and dilution. You can also use different colors, for example green. I am imitating with it seaweed and the accumulation of microorganisms. When the work is done, fix the result with a varnish. I saw a few ships in the dry dock and noticed that the hull is from the bottom fouling. Therefore, I am imitating some dirt with enamel colors. The advantage of enamel colors is that you can wipe them out with a enamel thinner even after drying. Thus, you can make some nice weathering effects. I created this luxury wooden display stand recently. I already have two bonus videos on how to make it, so you can check them out. The ship is attached with a two robust screws. It makes the whole final assemble and painting more comfortable. Therefore, I highly recommend create something similar. Another step is wash. It is highly diluted oil paint or you can use original pre-diluted enamel wash. It makes the details and shading more pronounced. I am applying it to panel lining, small raised details and edges. I am wiping out and blending excess wash of enamel thinner. The railing is easy after all the crazy details. If you want to simplify your work, then spray the parts in the frame. I use very thin super glue. You don't need to apply it along the whole length, but instead only on the few spots. Do not forget to correct scratches. And with the railing is the ship done. Ok, not so fast. There is a plenty of details that need special care. You can start with paintbrush highlighting. Simply paint all erased details with a light grey color. I 
I want to paint more highlights with oil paints, so the best for this is matte surface. Therefore, I'm spraying matte varnish over the whole model. Lovely details are tiny seaplanes. Do you want to see how to make them? Ok, but it was a slightly more complex. Again, they are very simplified, so I must perform minor improvements. The wings are thick, so it is essential to thin down plastic from the bottom side. You can use smooth nail files and sharp hobby knife. The planes have ugly pins for floats. I remove them and fill them with a party. Luckily, in the Flyhawk upgrade kit are parts also for this plane. It looks tiny, because it is, or I have large fingernails. The kit does not have water slide decals, only ugly thick stickers, so I was forced to paint around less by hand. And this is the result, you can hardly notice it on the large deck, but all the extra work, worth it. I thought the result will be much worse. I told you a few minutes ago that I want to paint more highlights with oil paints, so I finally got to it. I am painting some dull grey panels on the deck with a light grey. The ship still looks very monolithic, so the best way how to break this feel is more shading. The advantage of oil paints is slow drying time and extra thin layer, therefore it is the best for shading on very detailed models. Another trick of how to break the uniform feel is different colors. Personally, I like dark brown. You can imitate with the same color rust, but also more shading on wood.
that was some painting again. The last but not least is ringing. Yamato has it more complex than Bismarck, but nothing horrible. At least it is not sailboat. Essential is to find proper photo documentation. I use thin flexible threads from Ushi van der Rosten. I recommend 0.03 because 0.01 is too thin and work with it is not pleasant. I glue threads with a super glue. The material is porous and glues nicely absorb into. The fibers are super flexible, so you don't need to worry that you burst it by mistake. If you want to feel like a spider, then ringing is probably a good example. Only a few final touches and I'm done. I look at the photo documentation and realize that the side guns are ordinary AA guns, like on the rest of the model. So the barrels are in the kit very thick and not realistic. Therefore I am cutting them out and replace them with a metal parts from unused railing. I promised another battleship model after unexpected success with the Bismarck. But the Yamato model took me almost one year. Primarily, I lost patience a few times and meanwhile built more friendly models. The major problem was that the kit was a snap kit and a lot of details were simplified. I like the result, but I'm primarily happy that I could finish it and my eyes are still healthy. I hope you enjoyed this long video, learned something new and primarily, I hope I didn't discourage you from this model. That is all, thank you for watching and see you next time, here is the presentation of the finished model.